This is Abdul Saad, clinical psychologist at Vital Mind Psychology here in Sydney, Australia. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I've recorded a video, so I apologize for uh, the lack of updates. Um, I've just had a lot on um, with uh, running the practice and with doing various things, uh, but I hope to get back on track uh, with a new series of videos in the coming weeks. Uh, thank you for everyone that uh, continues to uh, watch and comment on the previous videos um, and to all the subscribers. In today's video, I want to address the topic of how magnesium deficiency sabotages your mental health. And um, magnesium really is, uh, for me, a, a love affair of sorts. It's a mineral that uh, has played such a, an incredible role in my own personal uh, health journey and it's a mineral that uh, I think uh, is playing a very very large role the deficiency of this mineral is playing a very large role in the current epidemic <clears throat> of mental health disorders uh, affecting uh, the very young affecting our teenagers and adolescents affecting our young, our young and middle-aged adults and our elderly folk so let's talk about magnesium the mineral, let's talk about magnesium deficiency and why you need to know about it in terms of your mental health. So most people know that magnesium is a mineral. Uh, it is an abundant electrolyte in the body and magnesium is involved in over 300 uh, enzymatic reactions in the body. Uh, chief amongst them is magnesium is critical for cellular energy production. So our cells can't make energy without sufficient magnesium. Magnesium is involved in regulating our blood sugars. Magnesium is involved in relaxing our muscles. Uh, magnesium promotes arterial flexibility. It has very important cardiovascular benefits. And magnesium is critical for producing the uh, neurotransmitter serotonin, which is involved in uh, depression and anxiety and in lowering, lowering uh, stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline and in fact in regulating stress hormones of uh, cortisol and adrenaline so given this we can expect that if there is a shortage of magnesium in the body it will you'll you know the individual will manifest certain symptoms and uh, you know you can research these on various websites in, in uh, published papers but the main uh, deficiency symptoms that people describe when they're low in magnesium are fatigue, irritability, restlessness, uh, poor memory, uh, having a rapid pulse, experiencing headaches and trouble with sleeping or insomnia. The other interesting thing about low magnesium, magnesium deficiency from a mental health perspective is that low magnesium levels Remember, I'm talking about low tissue magnesium, so not necessarily magnesium levels as detected via a blood test because the, your, the blood as a transport medium very tightly regulates magnesium levels and a deficiency isn't going to be very accurately picked up in most blood tests such as the serum blood level of magnesium. But when our tissues become depleted of magnesium, one of the interesting uh, psychological manifestations is what's known as belligerence. A person will become increasingly belligerent, irritable, hostile, uh, quick to react, uh, very quick to perceive criticism. Uh, and this is actually a manifestation of a low tissue level of magnesium. Uh, the person's fight flight system, their physiological sympathetic nervous system response uh, the threshold for the activation of that response becomes much lowered when someone is deficient in magnesium uh, when it comes to um, magnesium and depression and anxiety uh, studies have shown that um, deficiency is quite common and these studies are based on using um, food questionnaires to calculate magnesium intake as well as using uh, blood tests uh, especially the red blood cell uh, or RBC uh, magnesium versus the serum uh, blood test. Uh, a minor point, but basically it can be quite difficult to measure uh, in blood. 
but the ones that have, the, the studies that have used blood testing have found on average lower levels in uh, people with depression and anxiety compared to people without depression and anxiety. Now, one of the important mechanisms via which uh, a magnesium deficiency sabotages our mental health is that magnesium deficiency uh, reduces our body's ability to properly deal with and tolerate stress. So when we're magnesium deficient, the stress response uh, becomes highly dysregulated uh, and a lot more erratic. And the reason for this is because when we are stressed, uh, our adrenal glands produce more adrenaline and more cortisol, uh, two stress hormones. And as adrenaline and cortisol levels increase in the body, we get more magnesium wasting. So magnesium starts to come out of the body, come out of the cells, it starts to come out in our urine when we're stressed. And this causes an increase in um, heart rate, it causes uh, increased blood pressure, it causes muscular contractions. And the subjective feeling is one of anxiety, one of irritability, uh, one of nervous tension. One of the amazing things in my mind is that if we look at the, some uh, very common anxiety disorders that uh, psychologists and psychiatrists diagnose, there is a striking resemblance between the symptoms of those disorders and the symptoms of low magnesium. If you take, for example, generalized anxiety disorder or GAD, uh, which is an anxiety disorder which is very prevalent uh, in the population, it's characterized by chronic levels of worry, by upper body muscle tension, by fatigue, by irritability, uh, gastrointestinal upset, uh, poor concentration. So these are the actual clinical <clears throat> diagnostic symptoms of uh, generalized anxiety disorder, which psychologists and psychiatrists use to diagnose the disorder. If you, if you look at those symptoms and compare it to the symptoms of magnesium deficiency, uh, they're almost identical. And in my clinical experience, I, I find that when people start to up their intake of magnesium through diet and supplements uh, to at least meet the RDA of 400 milligrams per day for adults, uh, what we find in the clinic is that a lot of the symptoms of something like generalized anxiety disorder uh, become much less intense. People uh, get a rebound in their energy. They start to sleep better and their capacity to let go of worries massively improves uh, without a lot of psychotherapeutic intervention, right? Now, we, we tend to find this more with people who just have the generalized anxiety disorder and not with more complex cases. Obviously, with more complex cases, there can be other things happening that do require uh, specialized psychotherapy. But for the for majority of people who complain of worry, tension and fatigue, uh, magnesium can work wonders. Now, in terms of what people can do to up their magnesium, um, if an individual is deficient in magnesium, what I found is that supplementation is um, almost always essential because the diet is too um, uh, unreliable a way to, to get the levels up reliably day after day, week after week. And in terms of supplementation, a good guide is provided by Dr. Caroline Dean, MD, ND, medical doctor, nat naturopathic doctor. She's actually ha she actually has a great book called The Magnesium Miracle. <clears throat> and in that book, Dr. Dean has a, a chapter on depression. And in that chapter, her, her recommendation for depression and anxiety is 300 milligrams of magnesium in a highly absorbable form. Uh, she recommends citrate, magnesium citrate, which is uh, quite a well tolerated form and uh, quite well priced, twice a day. So about 600 milligrams a day, but usually four to 600 milligrams is the ballpark. 400 milligrams is the RDA that's set by the government and nutritional bodies as the minimum that ad adults need to get. If you look at the, the studies, most adults aren't getting anywhere near that. Um, some people are lucky if they're living on fast food to be getting 150 milligrams a day. And this magnesium deficit will definitely sabotage your mental health. <clears throat> the other thing that people can do to uh, help their body retain magnesium is uh, to reduce their intake of uh, processed 
the carbohydrates, white flour products, <clears throat> and uh, just on a bit of a tangent, the other thing I found with magnesium and mental health is that um, empaths, so that we always find a way to link this back to uh, our uh, previous discussions on empaths and narcissism, I found that empaths tend to be chronically low in magnesium. And I think part of the reason for this is empaths are giving off a lot of their energy, a lot of their time, um, they're not looking after themselves and they can become very easily depleted of magnesium. And I find often uh, issues with muscle cramps, leg cramps, twitches, poor digestion, poor sleep, tend to plague the empath. The other thing is if you're in a, in a toxic relationship, if you're with someone that is draining you of your, of your energy, um, even if you spend a little bit of time with someone that's very draining, that's got a victim mentality, that's complaining all the time, this can actually deplete you of magnesium. So magnesium can be depleted both by physical as well as psychological factors. And it operates in a incredibly, um, uh, uh, an incredibly complex mechanism via which there's various feedback loops where, uh, you know, it, it could be a psychological uh, mechanism it could be someone that's someone draining you of energy that depletes you of magnesium but you still need to at a, at a that mineral or biochemical level uh, make your cells and tissues replete with magnesium by upping your intake so i hope you found this information helpful uh, i hope that it stimulates some thought some research on your part about magnesium if you're watching this video uh, if you suffer from anxiety or depression of nervous tension if you're having trouble sleeping I would definitely recommend that you research magnesium and research ways in which you can reliably and safely up your intake of magnesium. <clears throat> the beautiful thing about magnesium is the body has a way of regulating uh, how much to take. So what tends to happen with people if they over supplement, they will get loose stools. Um, you'll get perhaps some, um, some diarrhea <clears throat> and that's your body's way of telling you to back off. Um, okay, uh, I'll leave it there. In uh, some of the following videos, I'll be talking about some other aspects related to uh, minerals, to mental health, and, um, and to uh, depression as well. A few videos lined up in that regard. Uh, I'll also be posting a video on multivitamins and mental health uh, and giving people uh, five tips for how to choose <coughs> excuse me, a multivitamin supplement if they would like to try it to see if it can help with mental health symptoms. Um, there is some evidence that multivitamin and multimineral preparations can help in alleviate <clears throat> mild to moderate levels of stress and anxiety, help lift mood. And I think that this is always an option for people um, to try because the, the cost is low, the potential benefit is high, and there's almost no risk. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll catch you soon, God willing. Take care.